I know. I know. I just said it on the internet. I know. I just went there. I went there. Okay. I went there. I'm hoping that by now, some of you have just clicked off the video. <laughs> no one's going to even know that I actually just said that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This tip was worth waiting for, but I'm just telling you that I think it cheapens it. Hi, and welcome to the House of Valentina. I'm Valentina. Today's video is going to be loaded with tips and tricks on how to help your home not look so cheap. Now, I know that might sound a little bit superficial, so before you start thinking less of me, <laughs> the reason that I wanted to do this video is because it's something that comes up really often with my clients. As someone who runs a real estate and design business, I'm based out of the Atlanta area. This is what I do for a living. I go to people's homes and I'm putting them on the market. And one of the things that I need to do is to help the house look like it costs more money. We don't want it to look cheap. We want it to look more expensive. And so as I was thinking about today's video, I was thinking about some of the things that I do when I go to style or slash stage up a home that I'm going to be putting on the market. And as it turns out, these are the exact same things that I do when I'm designing a home as well. So whether you're moving or you're going to just want to use some tips and tricks for the home that you are currently in, I think today's video is going to load you up with lots of ideas that are going to be super helpful and you're going to be amazed. These things do not necessarily cost any money or if they do very little. I hope that this will be something that you'll really enjoy. Make sure you hit subscribe, give the video a thumbs up if you love to make your home look more expensive. I know those of you that are thinking about selling your house, this is definitely something that you're definitely going to love. So give it a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments which of these tips and tricks is your favorite. Let's jump in. The number one thing that I see in people's homes that pretty much nobody really wants to deal with, but it's the cheapest thing that you can do to your house to make it look instantaneously more expensive is to get rid of clutter and messiness. Messiness, it's just part of life. When you walk in the door and everyone's got their shoes thrown down at the front door and you don't have a system for where things are supposed to go, I deal with the same thing with my own kids, with my own family, with myself. I think having a system is the key to this. My suggestion is to think about buying furniture with drawers. I love to shop at places like CB2. They have a lot of classic modern pieces and whether it's for your bedside table or your entryway, your desk, any of these spaces, these are ideal places to make sure that you purchase furniture that has a drawer so that you can open it up, shove all your junk in it and let it be. And if you can buy some baskets for zones where you just know that you're going to struggle with clutter. I have a lot of baskets full of toys all around my house. I like to even have, oh my gosh, do you, go, do you know what I bought? One of the best things ever. They sell these lidded boxes on Amazon and they're actually, they collapse down. So if you don't need them, you can just fold them flat. They come flat packed to your house. It's incredible. They look like they will not last, but I've had mine for years and they have a little lid on the top of them and they are the perfect modern way to hide your clutter. Cheap pillows will always make your home look cheap. And by cheap pillows, I mean pillows that look like the dog has eaten them, uh, that you've sat on them for your entire life and there's nothing left inside of them. <laughs> Fabrics are torn, all those kinds of things. Anything that just looks like your pillow is no longer viable and it really doesn't have a shape, it really doesn't have a sophisticated statement that it's making, it's time to just part with it. This is such an affordable way to instantaneously upgrade your home. We've shared on this channel so many times, we've done H&M hauls, we've done luxury Amazon hauls, to get a high-end look, you want to have pillows that give off a luxurious vibe. Some of my favorites are velvet. I've even got one sitting right back here behind me. This is one from Burke Home and it gives off a much more high-end look than maybe a pillow that looks like the dog ate it. The third thing is ratty blankets. I see this pretty much in everybody's home. Blankets that look like they have they have lived their life. <laughs> they have done their duty for many years. A lot of times they're pilled and you could get a little depiller for those. 
Um, a lot of times they're torn, they just look matted and just kind of gross. It is time to let it go. I mean, if you were able to sew it and make it look better, that's great. But otherwise, maybe it's time to donate it or use it for moving. I have a stash of blankets that have just lived their life and had a great life, but they don't look so good anymore. I store them down in my basement area for when we need to move things and I can throw them in the back of the car or something like that. But I don't put those ratty blankets out on display. So especially if you're going to be selling your house and you've got people coming in, you don't want to have something that looks like moths have eaten it, your dog, and you've got things spilled on it. That ratty blanket, it just needs to go. <laughs> and it's so easy and so affordable to get beautiful blankets. You guys know I talk about H&M Home all the time. Uh, I am Amazon. I've got a great, some Amazon favorites that are really affordable. I personally really like to shop at Pottery Barn and even Target has some great ones. So there are so many options for beautiful blankets. I've even done a couple videos where we've spent a whole bunch of money and shared a bunch of blankets with you. And the reason why is because it's something that I bring to every single staging job that I ever do. I've never gone to a single one of them and not had a blanket. So I use those blankets in my everyday work life. And so I'm able to share with you some of the top ones that really just look amazing. And it really does transform a space. My clients will say to me, wow, I, you were here for like an hour and the house feels completely different. And it's these little things that make that big of a difference. I think for me, the reason this one's a little bit strange for me is because I grew up in a house where my mom always had a lot of things on the coffee table. And now I've realized as I get older, not everybody is like that. <laughs> in fact, a lot of times when I go to people's homes, they have nothing on the coffee table. It's just empty. Either that or it just has a couple remotes and last night's dinner still left over sitting in a bowl. So the coffee table is one of the few things that you can do in your family room or in your living room in those living spaces where you're going to put a coffee table. That is a very sacred spot where you can display really beautiful things that will instantaneously help your space to feel more elevated. So first of all, leaving it empty really just, it's almost like a lost opportunity. It really is. And I would rather it be empty than full of, you know, gross leftovers or even the remotes. I think it's a great spot to buy a beautiful box where you can place your remotes. Um, every time I go to stage a house, everyone's like, oh, okay, box for the remotes. Wish I thought of that. <laughs> it's just such a simple little thing. I've bought really great lidded boxes at places like Target. Uh, I got a bunch on my Amazon uh, storefront where I put all my favorites in there for you guys. I've got a bunch and I think that you don't have to spend a lot of money. You just want to have a box that you can put the remotes in and then maybe have a beautiful book that's there, a vase with some clippings even just from the garden. It doesn't have to be outrageous what you put on it, but your coffee table is a great opportunity to really dress up your space and make a beautiful statement about who you are and the kinds of things that you really like. A lot of times I go to people's homes and the dining table is either not decorated at all and it looks like no one has used the dining room in years or the opposite is that no one has used the dining room in years and that's because it's covered in stuff. So your dining room is one of those spaces that I realize that a lot of people aren't using them as much these days, but I think it's a missed opportunity. I don't know why we don't use our dining rooms more, to be perfectly honest. I think that getting dressed up for a day, feeling fabulous and having a beautiful meal in a gorgeous room, that is one of the greatest luxuries that we are just I was about to say that we're leaving on the table. <laughs> no pun intended, but we really are just leaving this opportunity, just letting it go. We have a beautiful space. We have a beautiful room. It's real estate. It's costing you money. You're paying for your dining room. Why not use it? 
And even when you're not using it, why not decorate the dining table and make the space feel alive and special, even for when you're just simply passing by and waiting for that Friday night dinner with friends. Some of the ways that I like to dress up a dining table, I really like to put out a beautiful large vase. If you're trying not to spend a lot of money, but you really want it to feel high end and not cheap, think about a nice large vase. I have one sitting here, I'll show you. I've got this one from Pottery Barn. It is humongous and it's a very affordable piece. And I realized that when you buy a vase this big, that it is less affordable than maybe buying something small, but you just need one. You just need one of these, maybe a nice big bowl that you can put some moss balls or um, something you know really simple. You don't even have to fill the bowl. You don't have to. But something like this with some greenery in it and a big nice bowl. You could do something made of brass. You could do something made of wood. You can do something that matches the style of your home. It will totally dress up your dining room and it will instantaneously look more expensive. Speaking of underdressed areas, let's talk about the bed next. I find that the thing that I do most often is that I just go into people's homes and I just fix the bed. I, I fix it, I fluff it, I tuck, I add a blanket, I fluff the pillows. These are the things that when you really just dress your bed, you can completely transform the way that your bedroom feels. You don't even have to do anything else to the bedroom. Just simply go in, tuck the comforter in, make it look really tight, go for a hotel style look on your bed. It will make it feel so expensive. And that's not with spending a single cent. Now, if it looks ratty, if your bedding looks ratty, if what you have is starting to look old or just the pillows are deflated, investing in some new inserts for your pillows, investing in a beautiful blanket that you can lay over your bed, it will have a massive effect on the way, not only how the room looks, but how you feel in it. If you think about it, your bed is the last thing that you see when you go to sleep at night and the first thing that you wake up to. So how you sleep, all that matters, and how you feel when you wake up and go to bed, it's all important. I always think that whether you're selling or not, investing in your bed and your linens will make a huge difference. And you don't have to spend a lot of money. You really don't. Some of my favorite things, I've got them all listed in my Amazon storefront where I have all my favorites listed for you guys. I absolutely love some of their sheet sets. I've purchased some of their hotel style duvets and the shams. They have some really great stuff that is super affordable. Now, if you want to spend more money, of course we do all that too. But if you're trying to look for some quick fixes that aren't very expensive, you're gonna find that I've listed a whole bunch there and I've tried them all out and I use them all the time in my clients' homes. I just have a stash of some of those hotel style shams and the duvets and I just take them to, my, to the homes that we're staging because it's just an instantaneous fix. I think this is something that a lot of us struggle with. We don't put enough lighting into our rooms. You need to light your room. You need to light it from all the corners. You need to think about how the light bounces off of the space. You might have extra lamps. A lot of times people have extra lamps sitting in their attic or their basement. We just go grab the lamps and add some lighting to the space because lighting adds mood and ambiance. And I do realize you have to run electricity to it. Therefore, it's not completely free, but it's not very expensive to turn the lamp on and it really does make your space feel super high end. It's an easy way of taking the cheap out of a room. Move from cheap to chic. Ooh, that almost rhymed. <laughs> if you wanted to give it that chic feel, I think that florals and greenery will completely transform your space. I really try not to do too much faux florals or greenery because a lot of times the fakes just aren't that great. I think if you're gonna look for a fake, one of the best places is actually Pottery Barn. They actually have some really decent ones. And Studio McGee, I think they actually do a pretty good job with a lot of their faux florals. And I would say Crate and Barrel is another one. Now, if you don't want to do the faux floral route, go out to your garden, check out your parks. I mean, my neighbors are always teasing me. Anytime they 
are trimming the hedges. I'm like, hey, can I have those clippings? <laughs> I'm gonna put those in a vase. And they teased me before. They're like, you just want our trash? And I'm like, it's not trash, it's treasure. These are beautiful greeneries that look amazing sitting in a vase and they instantaneously transform your home. I literally just take the clippers out, go look in the garden, trim off a piece off of the bushes or if I've got a tree that, you know, it, it, you gotta trim it up anyway, so you might as well just use what you've got. So these will real this will really transform your space. It's what I do every single time that I stage a house and it makes a huge difference. You're gonna be amazed. Finally for today, let's talk about your art. Your art may actually be one of the biggest culprits that's making your house look super cheap. <sighs> Art is so hard because art is so personal, but you can always paint your own abstract artwork on this channel. We try to share a lot of the ones that we do ourselves. I'm in the process that I need to get this one put into a frame, but um, that's one of the things that I'm working on in my own house. We're not perfect here either. We're always working on things and getting things together, but your framing is a really big deal. A lot of times if you have a frame that just looks super cheap it's gonna cheapen your entire room. If you have artwork that just, a lot of times like cheap prints, they're not printed on nice paper. Having an eye for what looks high end will really help you when you go to places like Home Goods and you're looking for art. Certain things like glitter on your art, just it just really cheapens the whole look. I try to look for art that actually has brush strokes. I look for prints that are printed on nice, heavy paper. I'm looking for something that feels like it would be displayed in an art gallery, something that feels special. I think that a lot of times displaying, oh, I know, oh, yeah, am I gonna say that? Yep, I'm gonna say it. Okay, displaying your family pictures can cheapen your space. I know, I just said that on the internet. There you go. I know, I know, I just said it on the internet. I know, I just went there. I went there, okay, I went there. I'm hoping that by now, some of you have just clicked off the video. <laughs> no one's gonna even know that I actually just said that. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. This tip was worth waiting for, but I'm just telling you that I think it cheapens it. I think it cheapens it because it doesn't feel like art. So if you want to display your family photos, Obviously, if you're staging your house and that's why you've clicked on this video, I personally suggest taking down personal photos. I know that it's a little bit controversial. Sometimes I'll leave them, but when you're selling your home, you're trying to make room for someone else to imagine themselves living in that space. So I personally think that not only is it over personal to put your family photos on the wall if you're, if you're staging your house to sell it, I think it also just cheapens it in general because it just doesn't feel like art. It doesn't feel like something that you'd put in an art gallery. I think that some of the best places to look right now, Target with their Studio McGee collection and their Project 62 collection, they have some really great, super affordable options. I've actually been looking at Crate and Barrel. They have some really great options. Pottery Bar, they don't carry this stuff in the store, but they have some really great, beautiful artwork that's actually pretty affordable. I've gotten myself into all kinds of trouble today. Um, I, I hope that this is a tool that you can use in your home. And if you love your personal photos, I'm, I'm just gonna put this disclaimer because I know the comments that I can just, I can just hear you typing them right now. <laughs> if you like having your personal photos in your home, then display them and don't worry about it. I say that all the time. These are meant, these tips are meant to be fun. They're meant to help you enjoy your home, to help you elevate your home, especially if you're getting ready to sell it and you wanna make top dollar. I like having money in my pocket. I don't know about you, but if I'm gonna sell my house, I want to line my pockets with as much money as possible. And then when you get to the next place, then put your personal photos back up. I really believe that your home is your haven now more so than ever before. And I think that when you invest in your home, you invest in yourself. It is a moment of self care. And I think that it's super important and it will change your life to invest in your home and in the spaces that you're living your life in. So there you go. That's my little spiel. <laughs>
<laughs> I think it's amazing. I think it's important and I, I hope you do too. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you got some really fun tips and tricks out of it. Please give the video a thumbs up. Let us know down in the comments, which one of these is your favorite. Maybe you have another tip or trick that you think should have been on the list. Let us know down below what we, what we should have added. <laughs> There's always things, right? Okay, yes, just let me know. And um, don't forget to hit subscribe. So thank you again for stopping by. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.